on Ijara, okay, this is the second contract on this uh, for this topic. Ijara semua tahu, Ijara is actually a leasing. Sekejap. Ijara is stands for leasing. Isn't it? So, Ijara tu dalam bahasa Arab dia. Kita dah belajar leasing ni on chapter 3. So, you guys know kalau apa-apa berkenaan dengan leasing, it is related dengan rent uh, thing lah. We renting the asset to the customer. So, ijarah ni ada tiga jenis. As you guys know, kita pun dah belajar, ijarah ni ada tiga jenis. Oh, okay. Which is operating ijarah, muntahia bin tamlik ijarah, and ijarah tumma albay. Ini uh, yang saya cakap pasal aitab tu. Ini stands for ITAP and this is the last types of ijarah yang commonly used in Malaysia lah which is on higher purchase. Sekarang kita tengoklah satu-satu what is uh, e operating ijarah. Operating ijarah ini biasanya uh, when the banks are trying to renting out the asset to the customer tapi uh, dia tak include not include the promise to purchase the asset at the end of the contract and meaning the asset to at the end of the contract uh, tak akan di transfer the ownership to the customer lah meaning kalau uh, customer ni renting out uh, probably rumah ke rumah tu tak jadi milik customer at the end of the contract so that is um, an example for operating in Zara. Untuk uh, the second ijarah which is on bitam lik ni, ini biasanya uh, the lease own the lease asset at the end of the period. Meaning macam tadi operating ijarah, um, customer tak dapat the asset ataupun did not own the asset at the end of the contract. But for bitam lik ni, ini uh, bank boleh pilih lah kira ada option whether they want to give the ownership to the customer or not. Kalau let's say lah rumah tadi kan. So the bank actually can um, can choose whether they want to give this house to the customer ataupun tak nak. So the bank ni can actually offer a verbal unilateral promise of transfer the ownership at the end of their period. Right, ataupun dia offer the asset to the purchase customer at the specific price. So, kiranya uh, the bank ni tadi saya cakap uh, boleh ada option lah whether, whether they nak give this asset to the customer or not. So, the bank ni boleh bagi asset to the customer dengan tiga cara which is by way of give ataupun by token price ataupun by equivalent price. Dekat sini kita tengoklah satu-satu um, cara untuk bank nak provide this asset to the customer tu. Kalau dia kata the banks are trying to give the asset by way of gift, meaning that um, dia tak ada the lease tu, the transfer of asset tu doesn't have any consideration. Meaning free of charge lah. It is a, a gift from the bank to the customer. So, the, that one uh, simple je. Kalau korang tahu the bit by way of gift means um, the bank tu tak dapat cash ataupun tak dapat apa-apa. So, dia bagi je terus asset to the, to the customer. At the end of the contract period lah. But, uh, for the second option, which is on token price ni, it is a sales of token consideration at the end of the contract means that the sales uh, for token consideration ni biasanya uh, dia berlaku ataupun was done at the end of ijarah contract means uh, sebenarnya time ni uh, wujudnya ijarah contract and dia ada promise to sell uh, by the lessor lah masa kalau kiranya before the bank and the customer nak buat uh, ijarah kontrak 
Bitam link ijara kontrak Dia kena ada persetujuan From the customer Whether uh, dia nak Ada kontrak ijara Which is only leasing And ada kontrak um, Sell Selling lah, sales contract with the bank too, which is at the end of the day, the customer ni have to pay like certain amount of token consideration uh, to own the asset as a whole. So, dia cakap ni lah ada dua tadi kan, sales and also ijarah contract here. Saya tulis dua kali pula. So, dalam sini. Kan, at the end of the day sebenarnya, um, If the customer tadi tu agree and wishes at the token consideration, so um, the bank tadi tu and the customer boleh uh, going into two types of contract, which is first is on ijara contract, and then at the end of the day, uh, in case lah the customer tu nak own the asset, so uh, the bank have to keluarkan sales contract pula lah, which is the customer have to pay certain amounts of consideration to the bank uh, nak mengatakan dia nak belilah aset tu so what is the token consideration this is bagi maksud the token consideration maksudnya it is an agreed certain of price that uh, deducted to determine the depreciation amount maksud dia macam ni Biasa dia panggil um, a group price ni as a residual value. So, kiranya uh, the customer ni akan uh, considerate ataupun maybe akan bagi tahu the certain amount of a group residual value that uh, need to be deducted uh, to need to be deducted with the cost to actually determine the actual depreciation amounts. Contohnya, kalau kita nak dapat depreciation amounts of certain asset, kan kita ambil nilai cost of that asset tolak dengan residuals value kan. And then dapatlah depreciation amounts of that asset. So, kiranya the bank uh, can charge uh, certain amounts of residual value to the customer if the from the cost tadi tu uh, let's say uh, 200 at set dia so uh, the residual value tu is being agreed by the customer and yang yang bank ni nak charge kan like certain amount of um, charges to the customer which is this charge akan ditolakkan dengan nilai cost kita so untuk mendapatkan nilai depreciation at the end of every year lah Okay, that one is on the second option. Now, kita move to the uh, third option which is on the equivalent price. So, equivalent price ni is the sales of asset at any time during the period of lease. Meaning, let's say lah tadi, the bank tu kan. The bank, the sells the asset to the customer. Let's say, uh, dia punya uh, contract years dia is 2 years. So, within 2 years ni, Uh, baru setahun, customer pakai uh, that asset. But then, customer decided to purchase the asset. So, dia punya dia punya amount ataupun the price that the customer have to pay to the bank is the amount of uh, the remaining installment lah. Sebab ada another one year kan, dia belum habis contract. Tapi, disebabkan tengah-tengah contract, uh, customer itu rasa dia nak bayar semua installment. Uh, and then terus dapat dia punya asset to the customer so dia boleh do so tapi uh, the bank can give the asset um, to the customer tu as according to the equivalent price punya option lah kiranya so yang ketiga ni pun senang tapi yang kedua ni uh, saya rasa korang confused um, just highlight I want to highlight here yang the tips for token price ni korang ingat je kalau customer tu rasa dia nak beli and then dia agree to pay certain amounts of token consideration which is at the end of the day adalah untuk kebaikan dia juga which is nanti dia akan dapat dia punya asset. So, uh, itu adalah uh, lies under token price punya option. Next, 
uh, the next types of ijarah which is aitab aitab yang macam saya cakap it is a uh, ijarah leasing contract yang normally and commonly used in Malaysia and biasanya uh, contract ni kita diguna pakai dalam higher purchase uh, contract lah it is an a contract like when we owning the benefit of the certain asset for a specific period of time meaning the the customer at the end of the contract akan own the benefit of the asset lah dia lebih kurang sama macam bitam lik cuma bitam lik ni dia macam bergantung uh, harap kepada bank which is kalau bank tu rasa dia nak uh, bagi the asset to the customer, dia akan pergi go through tiga option tadi tu. But as for uh, ITAP ni, dia memang originally the customer akan go into ITAP contract. Memang sebenarnya uh, niatnya adalah untuk nak own the asset at the end of the um, contract period lah. Which is, uh, dia nak own the asset either by paying an agreed sum of rental with an agreement that the owner will transfer the rented asset to the hire and this ITAP contract uh, will actually consist of leasing contract as well as a sales contract macam saya cakap, dia lebih kurang macam bitam lik cuma bitam lik ni is depends on the bank kalau bank rasa dia nak bagi the promise uh, to give the asset to the customer then it is uh, lies under bitam lik punya contract tapi untuk ITAP Memang um, it is when the wait, when the bank going into contract ijarah I talk with the customer in like memang customer berharap dia nak own the, the, the asset lah at the end of the day so dia akan go into higher purchase contract ini biasa korang boleh kaitkan dengan pembelian kereta kereta kan Memang kita tiap bulan bayar installment Like kalau kereta bayar setiap bulan 400, 400, 400 So uh, bila habis je contract Let's say the useful life of that car is 9 years So bila habis je 9 years So the car tu automatically akan jadi milik customer So macam saya cakap Untuk ITAP korang kena uh, relatekan uh, contract ni dengan pembelian kereta So that is uh, for the third types of leasing dan untuk uh, dia punya ijarah types of ijarah lah now kita move to preparing uh, the journals for this contract pula ok untuk journal ijarah muntahia bin tamlik ni sama je cara recordnya dengan operating ijarah Okay, and the steps to prepare journal pun untuk semua contract sama je which is the first one kita kena record uh, apa the purchases ataupun the purchases or the nilai sales of the asset then second disebabkan kita receive installment ataupun revenue from the customer so itu pun kita kena record which is kita receive installment kan? from customer that one pun kita kena record and lastly kita kena record on a closing entries which is this one we have to the amounts of uh, expenses ataupun revenue yang kita receive we have to close and transfer to Sochi this is like actually a general step sahaja so korang tengok dekat dalam ni tepi ni kan first sekali macam saya cakap kita record the purchase of ijarah asset by the lessor means uh, kan before the bank trying to list the asset to the customer the bank ni have to own the asset first which is dia kena beli dulu asset tu from supplier betul so uh, the first step yang saya cakap, dia kena record lah amount yang dia purchase ni tadi from the supplier tu so dia record lah dulu purchase of ijarah asset by the bank so macam mana dia purchase 
kita debit ijarah aset sebab kita baru beli. So, the asset kita dapat. Which is, kita tu is the bank lah. So, uh, debit the asset. Credit cash sebab uh, kita uh, bayar. Time ni kita bayar duit kan untuk dapatkan the asset. So, kita bayar sama ada either by cash ataupun by account payable lah. Sama ada the bank tu paid by cash atau uh, paid on credit. So, kalau dia paid on credit, dia akan relate ataupun di effect dengan account payables kita lah. Which is, uh, the supplier tu now is the pemilu hutang. That one, on the first step, macam saya cakap. And then, the second one, kita kena record the receive or the rental income, which is here, bila bank berjaya jual the asset to the customer, the customer now, are uh, obliged to pay an installment to the bank. Betul lah. So, the bank now receive an installment lah. So, kita kena record lah from the bank books. Kita kena record installment receive ni. Macam mana? Kita receive cash lah from the customer tadi. So, debit cash. And then, credit ijarah revenue uh, account means, means pula. Means, uh, daripada uh, debit cash tadi tu, Sebenarnya kita kena kreditkan dia punya revenue sebab every time revenue meningkat, saya ada dia punya formula. Kalau revenue meningkat, kita akan kreditkan dia. Eh, saya tulis formula dekat tepi ni. According to the formula, you can also follow my formula um, whenever you are trying to prepare your journal. So, let's say, Asset plus with expenses equals to owner's equity plus with liability plus with revenue. So, this is on credit side. This is on debit side. Kan, revenue just now kan yang uh, ijarah revenue is revenue kita. So, kalau revenue belah sini, revenue meningkat. Eh, anything lah kalau equity ke liability ke revenue meningkat, kita akan kreditkan dia. Tapi kalau uh, this three accounting element menurun, kita debitkan dia. But as for asset and expenses, kalau dia meningkat, kita debitkan dia. Dan kalau dia tu menurun, kita akan kreditkan dia. So, um, kita by apa tu? By referring to the formula, kita tahulah why ijarah revenue here dikreditkan. Sebab Uh, bila kita dapat cash, sebenarnya kita dapat revenue from the customer. So, revenue kita meningkat. So, bila revenue meningkat, kita kreditkan dia. That's why kita kreditkan dia dekat sini. The one on the second step of the journal, right, which is on the receive installment from the customer. Now, kita kena uh, transfer, like I said, transfer uh, any amount ataupun any revenue ke any expenses ke to the Sochi. So, this is the uh, next step lah, which is kita transfer ataupun kita record recognitions of income from ijarah financing. So, apa yang awak kena buat? Disebabkan uh, kita recognize the income from the customer. Income from the customer tu is kita punya revenue. So, dalam Sochi dalam Sochi, revenue kan kita tambahkan kan? Sekejap, revenue kita tambahkan. So, uh, bila dalam Sochi ditambahkan, itu represent debit side of journal entry. Tapi kalau dalam Sochi dia tolak, which is related dengan kita punya expenses, so nanti kalau dalam journal entry dia, of closing entry, kita kena kreditkan dia. So, let's see macam ni lah. Uh, kita tahu revenue tadi tu is part of kita punya revenue. Ijarah revenue tu is part of kita punya revenue. Jadi, dalam Sochi kita tambahkan dia. Jadi, sebab tu dia debit here. So, debit lah ijarah revenue. Let's say tadi uh, bulan tu awak dapat installment from the customer total of 100. And then, what you have to do, you transfer the 100, this 100 to uh, Sochi lah. So, you debit balik revenue here, you credit 100 here. So, itu on dia punya revenue. Now, we have to post dia punya depreciation of this asset pula. Sebab kalau fixed asset ataupun non-current asset, mesti kita ada depreciation. 
So depreciation ni pun kita kena record dalam jurnal. Which is macam mana kita debitkan dia punya SOCI which is um, depreciation ni kita akan transfer to SOCI. Depreciation kan kita punya expenses kan. So macam saya cakap expenses dalam SOCI kita tolak. That's why amounts of accumulated depreciation ni kita kreditkan dia. So let's say dia akan jadi macam ni lah. Credit account depreciation and debit SOCI. Sebab every year kita akan di charge kan ataupun the asset akan uh, apa tu the, the nilai of the asset akan depreciate. So kita kena record lah the amount of depreciations of the asset every year. Right? Cara nak record terus je kita record je dalam SOCI. Kan dia punya amount of depreciation. So this is how you um, buat dia punya journal entries on depreciation lah. Saya cakap tadi, bitam lead dengan operating ijarah punya kontrak punya jenis sama kan? Tapi sebenarnya ada beza dia sikit to perform this journal entry which is on this one. Okay, macam korang tahu, ijarah muntahia bitam lead dan juga operating ijarah it is when the bank actually renting out the asset to the customer but the customer here tak akan uh, own the asset meaning the, the bank ni tak dapat um, revenue profit lah kiranya dia hanya dapat installment sahaja ok saya terus tulis dekat sini lah uh, korang kena bezakan bila korang nak catat ataupun nak prepare your journal for operating ijarah ijarah operating ijarah ni dia hanya akan record the purchase of asset je. Tapi dia tak record sales of that asset to the customer. Dia tak record sebab um, bank dalam operating ijarah, the bank hanya renting out the asset to the customer but the bank ni time ni hanya receive Uh, installment from the customer but not uh, profit from selling the asset from the customer. So now, uh, kiranya when you are trying to perform ataupun to prepare journal for operating ijarah, you have to record the purchase of the asset and then you have to record the installment of um, installment received lah from the customer tu. Now, last baru kita akan uh, transfer the amounts of um, installment, right, to Sochi. Okay, this one is a steps to prepare journal for operating ijarah. Untuk bitamlik tadi tu, okay, untuk bitamlik, awak kena tahu it is when the bank sell the asset ataupun renting out the asset to the customer but it is actually depending on the on the bank whether the bank ni um, at the end of the contract nak bagi ke tanah asset tu ataupun nak jual ke tanah asset tu to the customer but originally it is actually um, uh, niat the bank tu dan customer tu actually hanya untuk nak renting out dia punya asset so um, the customer akan dapat installment sahaja so kira sama macam uh, operating ijarah dia kena record the purchase of asset sebab ialah bank before the selling the asset dia kena own the asset dulu so dia kena purchase dulu dia punya asset to the customer and then the second ada tak sales of asset um, to the customer ni? Tak ada. Untuk bitam leak juga tak ada sebab macam saya cakap niat diorang berdua ni masa diorang uh, go into contract bitam leak diorang dan customer juga dan the bank juga bukan berniat untuk nak selling the asset. So, 
um, untuk kontrak ini the bank tu tak dapat revenue ataupun profit from selling the asset dia hanya dapat revenue from the installment receive sahaja so now dia dapatlah the installment uh, receive from the customer so dia kena uh, record and then at the end of the accounting period dia kena transfer sama transfer to Sochi macam saya cakap ijarah dengan Bitamlik memang sama cuma Bitamlik ni tak uh, tak end sampai sini sahaja dia ada extra um, journal entry which is on the transferring of asset sebab macam saya cakap at the end of accounting uh, not accounting period at the end of the contract the bank ni akan kat, uh, pilih lah buat kata putus sama ada ni nak transfer the asset according to the three options just now which is on buy gift buy token uh, consideration and also lastly uh, equivalent price so setiap um, cara to transfer the asset pun ada uh, journal entry dia orang masing-masing ok so journal entry dia is like this Okay, so this is actually the general entry untuk ketiga-tiga options of transferring the ownership just now. So, uh, ada tiga kan? Satu untuk by way of gift. So, how um, general entry untuk by way of gift ni? Let's say tadi um, kita uh, dah at the end of the contract lah. So, now the bank tu uh, nak bagi asset to the customer so nilai aset kita berkurang lah kan during that time aset kita akan berkurang so kalau according to the formula tadi aset uh, kalau meningkat dia akan debit but kalau berkurang dia akan credit so that's why ijarah aset here di credit kan kan So, but the amounts of the asset must be the net amounts after the depreciation. Kenapa uh, ambil the net amount? Sebab sekarang kita dah at the end of the contract. So, uh, nilai asset tu dah uh, dah ditolak dengan banyak depreciation amount yang setiap tahun kita record tadi tu. So, kita kena ambil uh, nilai asset yang akhir lah, amount asset yang akhir. So, This uh, nilai aset akan ditolak uh, dalam kita punya suci. Then on by way of gift punya journal entry. Now kita move to the second options to transfer the option uh, to transfer the aset, which is on the token price. So macam saya cakap, token price ni is an agreed price. Uh, agreed price. To be paid by the customer, isn't it? So, kita uh, as the bank, kita receive cash from the customer lah. So, sebab tu kita debit the cash here because kita dapat the cash. And then, disebabkan it is a transfer of ownership, means asset kita memang originally time ni asset kita berkurang which is the bank tu nak transfer. Bank tu tak nak hold the asset. So, asset berkurang. That's why kita credit juga Uh, jumlah aset uh, di sini kredit kan then sama sebab the agreed price just now is not the total uh, amount of asset the agreed price tu is according to the residual value so kalau residual value is um, like 100 tapi ada lagi nilai akhir Um, asset ni which is nilai dia uh, kira the net after depreciation is 200 so uh, you only receive 100 from the customer so another 100 you will oppose it to the sochi here right so like this lah on on token price punya journal entry so untuk uh, equivalent price Equivalent price ni memang totally um, 
the bank to sell the asset even though the uh, the contract period does not even end yet so macam tadi kita dah explain kan on equivalent asset ni kan dia bila uh, the accounting ataupun the leasing period not yet finish tapi the customer tu are trying to uh, buy the asset uh, apa tu during this period so um, dia ni memang the customer tu memang nak sell eh memang nak beli the asset so bank memang akan receive lah dia punya cash from the customer fully which is macam tadi saya dah explain amount yang customer have to pay to the bank tu is the amount of the remaining balance of the installment that's why the bank here akan dapat fully uh, installment uh, ataupun fully um, selling price ataupun fully cost of the asset lah that's why kita terus debit cash sebab uh, dia dapat cash credit the asset because kita transfer the asset to the customer so kita no longer have the only I mean the ownership of the asset that's why kita kena creditkan the asset from our bank perspective now kita dah uh, habis go through on the transferring of asset by three options under bitamlik tadi so korang pun dah tahu perbezaan antara um, operating uh, and also bitamlik nanti sekarang kita nak go through pula journal entry untuk itap ok so untuk itap perbezaan untuk prepare your journal is like this Of course, mula-mula the bank have to purchase the asset before the sale ataupun before the renting out the asset to the customer. Tapi, uh, concept of ITAP sendiri, dia adalah concept higher purchase which is um, the bank tu memang nak jual the asset tapi the customer kena beli the asset on credit which is the customer have to pay an installment uh, payment cost to the bank so memang dalam ITAP ni memang dia punya contract is a contract of buying and selling an asset lah but before you buy uh, before you sell the asset you have to you have to like renting out the asset first so Uh, cara nak record the first thing uh, kita record the purchase of asset and then kita kena record juga the sales ataupun the revenue kita receive from the selling of asset tadi okay. and then kita kena record sebab kita still dapat dia punya uh, installment from the customer So, kita record lah dia punya installment. So, awak boleh nampak lah dekat sini dalam ITAP ada dua types of contract. Leasing contract, selling contract. That's why kita uh, dapat installment, kita juga dapat revenue from the sales of contract tu. Then, baru kita buat last is the transferring of uh, apa tu of the sales Uh, to Sochi revenue from the sales of asset to Sochi dan jangan lupa juga ketiga-tiga ni kena record uh, depreciation depreciation of asset depreciation oops yeah. so ketiga-tiga ni yang sama hanyalah uh, untuk nak record depreciation of an asset sahaja tapi um, yang lain uh, awak tahulah beza untuk operating bitam lead and itap tu so that why on the perbezaan to prepare the journal for these three types of ijarah this is only the step to prepare the journal now kita tengok uh, itap punya journal entries okay. um, kita sambung on the itap journal entry macam tadi kita dah explain saya dah explain ITAP ni sebenarnya consists of two different contract which is the first one is the leasing contract 
which is mula-mula customer kena bayar installment amounts of cash to the bank yang installment tu is represent the leasing or the renting amount so bila at the end of the day dah habis di contract uh, punya useful life um, the bank akan keluarkan a sales contract to the customer yang mengatakan dan membuktikan yang customer tu dah purchase the asset and sekarang the asset tu jadi milik customer So, uh, like macam saya cakap, uh, untuk nak prepare journal, the step untuk setiap kontrak to prepare journal semua sama. Which is, untuk first sekali kita nak record the purchases of asset. Sebab bank, before dia jual the asset to the customer, dia kena beli dulu kan asset tu. Ataupun, uh, the sales, nak record the sales of Uh, the asset yang kita dah berjaya jual to the customer so let's see in nombor satu yang start tadi uh, sama macam nombor satu yang ini which is to recognize ijarah financing ini dia dalam satu journal dia record dua-dua ni sekali tau so macam mana let's see untuk nak record the purchase uh, of asset kan macam saya cakap the bank Before ni, dia akan purchase asset from the supplier dulu. Okay, bila dia purchase asset, the payment of, uh, apa tu, the money yang keluar from the bank tu, ke, kita kena record dululah. Which is, masa, macam saya cakap, masa dia beli the asset, time ni, duit dia, which is the cash, akan berkurang. Sebab, uh, dia dah keluarkan lah duit cash tu tadi. And then, dalam masa yang sama, dia akan dapat dia punya asset which is, ha, saya tulis ini asset je lah. Of course, uh, asset juga kan. Um, ini asset like um, the contract. Asset lah. Car ke, machinery ke. So, ini time ni dia dapat. So, the asset pun akan di uh, meningkat. So, kita dah tak dah nak dah tahu dah dia punya effect on accounting macam mana kita refer uh, formula yang saya bagi tadi which is asset plus with expenses equals with owners equity plus with liability plus with revenue kan kalau asset and expenses meningkat kita kena debit kan dan kalau asset atau expenses menurun kita credit kan so untuk uh, case yang first ni Asset kat sini, cash kita akan berkurang which is kita akan kreditkan dia amount cash and kita akan debitkan the asset yang kita beli let's say like car ke kan so kita um, apa tu, debitkan dia um, debitkan the asset so kat sini, saya nak cakap the first thing is the amount paid to the supplier so the bank ni, they paid Uh, add the amounts of cost to the supplier which is cost kita tadi 500 let's say kan dia, uh, dia beli 500 so the the cost price of the asset kita kena record lah 500 okay. that one is on the first step which is on the purchase of asset uh, daripada bank to the supplier now kita record pula the sales of the asset which is Uh, from daripada bank to uh, kita punya customer so let's say bank tadi jual uh, harga aset 500 ni kepada customer at harga 550 which is um, dia naikkan lah harga dia tu sebab dia nak profit kan so now how you want to record this transaction of course bila kita uh, sell to the customer kita punya Uh, sales akan meningkat dan sales kita akan meningkat and uh, at the same time kita punya customer baru akan wujud dalam kita punya book of account the customer here is kita punya trade receivable kalau korang ingat kenapa dia trade receivable sebab um, customer ni paid an installment basis to the bank meaning kita sekarang ni buat uh, sales on credit with the customer so kita nak record ada customer barulah yang uh, dia 
jadi kita punya penghutang. So now trade receivable account kita akan meningkat. Itu um, secara like general accounting punya terms. Tapi when we are trying to record in the Islamic finance book, kita kena record um, cara yang berbeza. Sebab mula-mula kita record the sales ataupun the amount yang kita, the profit yang kita dapat from selling the asset tadi. So, how we want to record the sales? First, kita record debit the customer kan? Sebab kat sini trade receivable is our asset time ni asset kita meningkat so kalau according to the formula asset meningkat kita debitkan dia so kita debitkan lah kita punya customer so um, islamic finance term of that customer is um, dia macam following nama contract tu so kalau contract tu contract ITAP so kita kena tulis nama contract lah so ITAP Financing ataupun ITAP receivable sama je Account So korang tahu this one is our customer And kita dapat uh, kita punya profit kan which is the sales So sales tu is kita punya Unearned revenue Kenapa unearned revenue? Ini adalah kita punya prepaid revenue. And in revenue ni is um, maksud dia is prepaid revenue which is a revenue yang kita dapat in advance. Kenapa kita dapat in advance? Sebab kereta tu belum sepenuhnya jadi milik customer means kita still have the obligation towards the car ataupun ah yalah to the asset tu sebab it is not fully owned by the customer yet tapi customer tu kira dah bayar awal-awal lah the amounts of uh, that revenue tu which is yang apa tu in installment basis tadi tu so that's why uh, kita uh, record the unearned revenue of 50 ringgit which is this one macam saya cakap kita nak record dia punya uh, revenue of the sales so record lah 50 ringgit sebab masa cost uh, kita keluarkan 50 kita naikkan 50 ringgit je so dia punya revenue is actually 50 ringgit je 500 tu cost dia so kita dah record cost tadi another 50 ringgit tu kita record as the uh, apa tu the revenue which is kita call it as unearned revenue uh, unearned revenue ni dia punya accounting uh, element is liability current liability so uh, time ni current liability kita meningkat kan which is uh, kenapa tadi sebab customer dah bayar in advance but we uh, have not ataupun um, the car tu are not even transfer the ownership to the customer yet so kita still have the obligations to the car that's why uh, unearned revenue yang kita dapat in advance tu is part of kita punya liability and time ni liability kita, kita, liability kita meningkat so bila liability meningkat according to the formula here kita akan kreditkan dia that's why they credit and then debit um, ITAP financing receivable uh, because this is represent kita punya customer which is trade receivable tapi kalau accounting term biasa kita just record je lah nama trade receivable account but this is Islamic finance so kita kena record dia punya nama uh, contract tu so sebenarnya <coughs> kalau korang faham yang um, apa tu dalam slide ni punya slide ataupun punya punya journal entry korang boleh go ahead and use this kind of ataupun this method of journal entry tapi kalau saya saya uh, like macam divide kan uh, to different journal which is yang satu ni on a purchase of asset and another one ni uh, to record the revenue yang kita dapat daripada penjualan asset tu kepada customer now baru kita masuk the 
second step which is on the receivables of renting installment basis tadi tu kan kita dah record the purchase uh, asset from supplier kita dah record the amounts of sale yang kita dapat daripada penjualan asset kepada customer and then the third one kita kena record uh, jumlah installment yang customer bayar kepada kita tiap-tiap bulan tu so how you want to record time customer bayar duit installment dia kepada bank kita ataupun the bank akan dapat duit cash time ni akan meningkat so bila cash asset meningkat kita akan tengok formula kan cash akan uh, bila cash asset meningkat kita akan debitkan dia so now cash asset meningkat kita debitkan lah masuk dia under debit cash now nak kreditkan apa kita kena kreditkan um, customer kita lah account customer kita sebab uh, dia dah bayar hutang dia jadi uh, account dia sekarang nama dia sekarang dah berkurang hutang dia dengan kita sebab dia dah berjaya bayar So macam saya cakap nama customer tu tadi tu represent nama kontrak kita dengan dia. So macam ni tadi. So I tak payah si receivable uh, time ni dia kita nak record customer baru. But then uh, bila dia dah bayar dah hutang dia tu hutang dia dah berkurang dengan kita. Jadi time ni um, customer kita punya account akan berkurang. So customer ni is kita punya asset. So bila asset berkurang Uh, kita tengok formula aset berkurang kita kreditkan dia that's why nanti kat belah kredit ni kita akan kreditkan i tak receivable lah macam tu so uh, this is the accounting effect untuk receivable at rental receive macam ni kita receive cash aset meningkat dan kita punya uh, trade receivable punya account which is the customer tadi tu which is uh, kalau uh, islamic term kita kena cakap dan kita kena tulis nama kontrak dia so time ni pun uh, kita punya asset which is the trade receivable punya account akan berkurang so daripada accounting effect ni korang kena refer formula formula yang saya bagi ni dan terus buat dia punya journal entry So this is the sec, uh, the third lah the third journal entry which is on the receivables of installment uh, from the customer to the bank. Now uh, settle on uh, apa tu recording the installment in the book. Now kita kena close the entries to empat eh closing entries. transfer to sochi which is amount yang amount um, revenue yang kita dapat tadi tu kita kena transfer the amount to uh, sochi lah which is kita dapat tadi uh, RM50 so RM50 ni is kita punya revenue kan so revenue kan um, dalam kita memang kena record kan dalam sochi bukan dalam sofpi so untuk macam recording purposes so kita kena record uh, ataupun nak buat kalau lah dalam soalan dia suruh buat closing entries of unearned revenue kita tu so what you have to do macam saya cakap revenue dalam Sochi is we have to plus kan revenue in Sochi so bila plus nak buat closing inventory dia plus represent debit so debit apa? debit kita punya revenue which is on the and earn and earn revenue ataupun and earn um, financing income awak nak ikut ni pun boleh tak kisah and uh, credit kan sebab dia kata nak transfer to Sochi so kita kena credit kan Sochi lah so berapa amount of revenue when kita receive uh, during that day during the purchases Okay, third settle. Macam saya cakap, kalau awak nak ikut slide punya cara untuk nak record um, semua ni. Oops, sorry. Untuk nak record semua ni pun boleh. Tapi kalau awak nak ikut cara saya pun boleh. 
Sebab kalau saya macam saya cakap yang satu nombor satu ni saya pecahkan jadi dua, which is uh, uh, satu on purchases of asset, another one is on receivables of revenue from the customer, and then uh, bila korang gabung pun korang akan dapat uh, jenis entry yang sama, so tak isa pun. Okay, cerita lah on ijarah punya uh, journal entry now kita tengok on the contoh example one here okay, contoh ni saya kena buat dalam satu video yang hanya untuk contoh saja. so you guys can go ahead and watch that video later on okay